when it comes to rise of kingdoms i have literally made hundreds of videos covering a bunch of different topics and aspects of this game but one topic that i've pretty much never covered on the channel is the best way to start rise of kingdoms if you know exactly what you're doing and these methods typically include the jumper projects the sleeper projects and the looper projects if you guys have watched my video talking about why i quit call of dragons you'll know that i'm not really a fan of re-grinding the same content over and over and over again and so the last time that i played kvk1 was kvk1 and i started playing this game in 2018 back then there was no such thing as kvk and when kvk1 came into the game it wasn't called kvk1 it was called kvk because that's all that there was so while i do keep my pulse on the early game for rise of kingdoms i typically don't play it because it's just not something that i like to do but there's another rise of kingdoms youtuber that knows a lot about restarting and the best possible strategies to start the game in rise of kingdoms and that is none other than the logic bank and the other day they reached out to me and said hey amir i just posted this new video and i would love if you could cover this on your channel see what you think and when i found out that it was a sleeper strategy guide for rise of kingdoms i figured that this might be content that you guys could really find useful as well if of course you ever plan on restarting your progress in rise of kingdoms or if you're a relatively new player but you do want to make sure that you get the best possible start to the game i think the logic bank is probably one of the most knowledgeable people in the rise of kingdoms community that covers this topic so he asked if i would react to his video here on my channel and i gladly agree but of course before we go ahead and take a look at what he's got for us today go down into the description and make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel go over to his videos drop a couple of thumbs up over there and if you feel compelled of course you can like my video and subscribe to this channel as well I'm about to press play but of course first what's going on guys cheers kingdom 3430 is on day 20 my account is 4 million power that would be pretty impressive free to play for a jumper account but this is not a jumper account it is a sleeper account now i think he's gonna go over what a sleeper account is in just a moment but day 20 free to play vip 7 over 10,000 gems and 4 million power that's pretty good and also this is the hidden lotus city skin which is typically really hard to get as free to play so let's see what we've got here what's the sleeper account well instead of making an account waiting getting it to level seven building up the power on it and then using the beginner's teleport to jump to a new kingdom when it opens maybe six or seven days later okay so what he just described there is what people call a jumper account you play until city hall seven and then you jump to a newer kingdom and then you have a massive advantage over those players let's hear him talk about his sleeper strategy a sleeper account starts day one builds up for 20 days and then migrates back to kingdom day 10. So just to be clear the difference between a sleeper strategy and a jumper strategy is that the jumper plays up to city hall level seven and then jumps to a new kingdom that is on day one like their first day it just opened that kingdom the sleeper strategy involves playing all the way up until day 20 with no limit to that city hall level really i think there might be a couple of soft limits and he might get into that later in the video but then you'll actually go ahead and migrate so not using a beginner teleport but actually migrating to a kingdom that is on day 10 instead of day one which means you'll have a 10 day advantage on the players in the kingdom that you will be migrating to as a sleeper let's have a little look where this account is now which is on 3430 so the maximum 10 get 10 day migration on this account will be 3439 opened for migration 19 hours ago and is 10 days and 19 hours old this is my target for migration. So his target is nine kingdoms newer. Okay. He's in 3430. He's going to 3439. When I reach this uh, kingdom, the altars haven't been taken yet. I'm stepping back in time with my powerful free to play account. This uh, guy's going to be a little bit backwards. I'm going to have a few frequently asked questions that I'm going to deal with. Then I'm going to have a little look at the checklist of what I would do before I jump. Then I'm going to talk about how I got to this power. So how much did I play this account to get it to 4 million? That's a big question because I think a lot of players see a power level like this and they're very impressed and they try to do it themselves. And then like, well, wait a minute, I don't have 10 hours a day to play the game. So how much did the logic bank actually have to play to get this account like this? Let's see. There are different types of free to play players. Some are 
tea to play, time to play. Like me, they're able to keep the phone open during the day, they go to bed late, they're able to log in regularly and look after the account. There are also those that are grind to play or grind to win. They are um, barbarian chain, which I don't talk about in this guide. That's not something I do. They also gather gems, which again, not something I do. Now, when he's making this distinction, the first thing that came to mind for me was 12 inch PVP. He's another Rise of Kingdoms YouTuber. I'm sure you're probably familiar with his content. He is basically the free to play God in Rise of Kingdoms. Okay. And admittedly, I don't tune into Rise of Kingdoms streams very often, but from what I have seen, it seems to be the case that what he does is during his streams, he will barb chain and basically grind for the entire duration of that stream and get a ton of value there. And then he can log off and do other things. Whereas the logic bank, here is saying that he doesn't really do the barb chain anything maybe he does a little bit that's not the primary goal of this video he doesn't really you know send out gem gatherers which i do believe 12 inch does do that quite a bit what logic bank is saying here is that you know he's just got his phone just kind of chilling and while he's doing whatever he does maybe he has a job where he can work from home or whatever a situation is that's irrelevant he kind of can just micromanage all day make sure he's always sending out his gatherers and spending down ap and all that other stuff so good distinction to make i do play a lot but I don't grind in the same way that some players do or some free-to-play players do. But what I do is try and be smart with my time and especially smart with my resources by using farm accounts to feed this account. So I am City Hall 22, which getting to City Hall 21 is a test of how many speed-ups you have. But getting to City Hall 22, I assure you, becomes a battle with resources mm -hmm. this is not possible without farm support if you guys are an older player you might forget that like stone is a massive barrier for progress for a lot of new players right getting the stone required to upgrade your city hall and your your walls and also i think it requires a lot of stone for your tavern as well i don't remember exactly but really your walls are like the big one it's a huge bottleneck for a lot of players and that's what he's saying here so this week alone my one two my three farms 23 million 34 million and 50 million have given over a hundred million resources this week alone to my main okay also i've been very lucky so what he's saying is that this is his account this is his account and this is his account it seems to be so that's a lot of resources just to make his main you know this competitive and to fully dis disclose uh, what i've been given on this account a player did give up after a civil war the person number three here and they gave me resources as well as giving resources to some other players as well so i have had a boost with resources but what you're seeing here not possible without the time to play or farm support so what he's saying here is that in order to get the best possible outcome as the for the sleeper strategy right you need to have a ton of time and you need to commit to having multiple active farms okay so you're not gonna be able to do this strategy without it don't have that expectation obviously when i had the accounts first made i log in an awful lot because uh building queues are only an hour or 45 minutes but as we are entering the end of the week i don't have to log in so much because of course build queues go on for hours so freely admit i have the time to play i'm lucky enough to be able to keep my phone open during the day but i've reached 4 million 2 million i think would be a solid target for a true free to play that perhaps has school during the day and sleeps at night the next question i get asked a lot how many gold chests did i get on this account well there was a big civil war i think i've had about 20 gold chests in total on this account so when he's saying gold chests, he's not meaning gold keys in the tavern. Gold keys open a gold chest, right? What he's talking about is he's in an alliance where other players are buying bundles and you get a gold chest from a 100 US dollar purchase bundle. Now that may be different if you're in a different country, but basically the max tier of bundle gives everyone in the alliance a golden chest and a lot of times you know people look at really successful free-to-play players sometimes on this channel we cover free-to-play player accounts and a lot of people are like oh well that's nice but he must have been in a whale alliance and it's like okay you know maybe but you, those are advantages that you have to seek those advantages if you really are going to be a dedicated free-to-play player you have to figure out how you can get that advantage how can you get in alliances like that so here we see logic bank being very transparent that he has gotten about 20 gold chests so not a huge amount not been boosted in a huge way when i'm in a sleeper account i tend to avoid <laughs> top alliances because i want to keep a low profile but got very unlucky in this kingdom as it had a big 
civil war the reason that he keeps a low profile for sleeper accounts is because he is committing to migrating right if you're sleeping if you're a sleeper account you will be leaving that kingdom to another kingdom and a lot of times you know kingdoms that are brand new it's very competitive obviously he just talked about a civil war and so they won't want to support a player knowing that that player is literally going to leave right you're kind of like a trader in the home kingdom so you've done your 20 days here you are with 4 million or 2 million power what do you do before you go? The first event you should be interested in is the Expedition Dash, which lasts for 20 days. So when it finishes, your sleeper should be ready. Due to the Civil War, my rank improved to four as people migrated away. So a fantastic collection here. Now, when I first started Rise of Kingdoms, I actually don't think the Expedition Dash event was a thing, but I believe he's talking about like progress in the Expedition levels also the expedition dash is important for sleepers because it is a way of tracking people that can also come with you in the sleeper project so if we go into chat all these people will be able to sleep with you that have done the expedition 40 in this time if i pick the name out i pick the person in 40th sent them a message that looked like this good job on getting to expedition level 40 you made your account here, which means if you want, you could come with me with a passport transport day 10 and collect the altars again. This is important. Recruiting as you go, make your sleeper much stronger as you'll bring people with you from your kingdom to the kingdom you are going to. And of course, if you do go to a kingdom with a bunch of other players, then you actually have a group of people that are in theory, a lot stronger than the players in the kingdom that you are going to. And if you can do that, then you might be able to create or join an existing alliance there and kind of guarantee a lot of the altar rewards. Before you jump, I've waited to reset. Of course, we get new events at reset and I have gone into them and quickly done them. Two gold heads there, five epics, and I've done the chests of the Harvest Watcher. So really, this account is now ready to go. You need 600,000 in Alliance coin, which I sadly haven't got at the moment. So I'm going to have to sell an epic blueprint for 45,000. But I'm not an Archer account, so I'm happy to lose that one. And I think you can consider this a sort of downside of using the sleeper strategy is that you do need a passport page, right? And so the only way to do this strategy free to play is if you have access to an alliance that can get you a passport page for free. Otherwise, if none of the alliances in the kingdom are going to put passport pages there, which again, why would they? Because you're basically a traitor to the kingdom, right? Why would they want you to leave? Why would they want to spend their alliance credits on a passport for a player that is leaving, right? So you might have to be in a sort of position of power or authority to get players to put that in the shop for you or put it in a shop for yourself right or of course you know you could spend five dollars for the bundle and then boom you just have a passport and that you're, there you go purchase the passport now ready to go three four three nine if you see i already have an account there waiting for me we'll talk about that in a moment i've also set up a farm so when i arrive i'll be able to boost my resources back up especially as i'm gonna have to delete some on the way remember i'm now stuck here for 30 days so if this kingdom falls apart i've got 30 days to wait here but i'm confident i've been on their discord i've had a chat with the leader and I'm happy to come to these guys. No kingdom is perfect, but I think these are going to be a good kingdom for me. Now, another thing to remember, if you guys haven't migrated or maybe you haven't done it in a while, the amount of resources you have cannot exceed the production capacity of your storehouse. That's why he has an account, a farm account already in the new kingdom that he's going to. Also remember that I am going to lose the Lycran scrolls. They stop when you migrate. Also <laughs> got to keep in mind that you need to move to a kingdom that is different to the map of which you started on or which you created your sleeper on. This is important because of course you've already collected the medium and high caves and you want to be able to collect more medium and high caves. So if you guys don't know, maybe you're a newer player or you just never really looked at this because it doesn't really matter for most people, but different kingdoms have different like kingdom layouts. Like the actual map design is slightly different. I think there's like four different designs. I might be wrong about that, uh, but basically you want to go to a kingdom that is a completely different design than yours because you won't have collected those caves and things like that on the map. In my case, because of the start this account had, I'm only going to be able to get some high caves. Find the top alliance and a 
apply. I've already cleared the map once, but I'm going to have to clear it again. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I will never do jumpers, sleepers, whatever. Bro, I cannot stand fog. I cannot stand it. As a mechanic, I get doing it for the first time as a brand new player totally makes sense to me there's kind of like a lore behind it there's the adventure behind it okay i get that but as a returning player not for me dog not for me let's now go through to how i got this power and my sleeper tips people often ask me what was my build order or what order did i do things in i really really did nothing other than what the main event quest line asks for. This is what I follow. The game will guide you to follow this. Sometimes you have to step ahead. For example, if I'm done my storehouse and I'm just waiting on my wall at level 18, I would of course start my level 18 stables to try and get ahead. But apart from that, the build order is simply the build order as is set out by the main event line now i typically talk about this in like my beginner's guide videos that i have done in the past but you really just want to rush that city hall 25 like that's just the main thing get that city hall maxed out there's no advantage to getting there slowly basically that's what he's saying here just do the standard build order a lot of players intend to follow the main quest line but the reason they deviate from it is because they run out of resources they often run out of stone during the lohar at the start and then of course as they get into the city hall 17 18 if they don't have farm support they will have to start deviating very far away from the line they want to follow the next tip i'm going to tell you is very simple but it needs to be said out loud people think there might be something secret that i'm doing but this is one of the major reasons my sleeper is so strong the game gives you one two three four five in your research and then two buildings which i've got one there and something else so seven cues which in a day is seven times 24 so you get a week's worth of speed ups free every day just for playing the game but you don't get these speed ups given to you in your bag you have to either use them or lose them an example of how the jumper and sleeper deviate hugely is once you have finished doing your building and research in your jumper three of your building cues lay idle every day you lose one research day and two building dates also your four other cues only last an hour without you logging in which is impossible nobody can log in 24 hours a day so what i think he's saying here is that you always need to be researching something you always have to be using your building cues you always have to be training things and one of the downsides of the jumper strategy is that you kind of hit a ceiling where you can't really progress your buildings you can't really progress your your research and things like that and for every day that you can't do those things is a day's worth of progress that you're losing basically right second point is because of the way new kingdoms open jumpers for safety have to cut short they have to go usually after seven days i would recommend to use your jumper where a sleeper uses the full 10 day migrations every single minute of it in those three days of extra sleep time you gain another 21 days of speed ups so remember these aren't real speed ups that come into your bag these are the speed ups that you get just from having these seven cues which all of us have that is the main difference now at first glance that might not sound like a lot but think about if you're going back to a kingdom that's only 10 days old if their whole account is only 10 days old then three days is 30 percent of their entire progress that they've made right so the advantage that you have going into that kingdom is actually massive it is a massive advantage now i of course have done lots of things different on this account i've used gems in a way that have boosted the account I've used my experience points hugely different where I've spread it around to get more power because I completed the hidden lotus uh, this skin here the hidden lotus challenge some of the power I have is also inflated where I used training speed ups before I got the first altar which has the 5% training boost I'm not Britain you shouldn't really be using your training boosts but again i play the game differently that i personally like expedition here i am three starred up to level 44 which now i am on kingdom day 11 free to play with four million power the reason he's explaining why he was spreading out his power is because the hidden lotus city skin is something that you, you have to hit a certain power threshold in order to actually get that right now if the hidden lotus quest is the same as i remember i think it was 1.5 million power for 
the first couple of days that the kingdom is open so you really got to like it's a sprint right there which is very you know kind of difficult and you have to play a little bit suboptimally as a free-to-play player if you do want to get that now, the real question is do you need the hidden lotus skin i mean it might it might help in kvk1 you know i have to admit if you said to me a year ago do you think a free-to-play player could four million on day 11 i would have laughed at you i would have thought that was impossible mm -hmm. without huge amounts of grinding huge amount of gem gathering or barbarian chaining i know people would like me to talk more about how i got the power but really it doesn't deviate from how you used your gems how you used your ap how you've used your time how you've kept your cues working how much of that free seven days a day you used as opposed to how much you lost when you logged in and let's say all of your training cues are full uh finished and are just doing nothing what he's saying here is that he didn't really do anything fancy to get these this four million he just had his phone open all day he just always made sure he was never not getting value from all of these things his ap his gems all that it really is as simple as that full disclosure this account got four altars which isn't a lot i think about eight or nine sanctums again not a huge amount this has not been a highly boosted account so just imagine what a real grinding pro like 12 inch pv penis could do with this strategy what i say even a free-to-play legend like logic bank still respects the grind of 12 inch so what he's saying here is that if you really were insane you really could push this even farther this is kind of just like a an account with high activity and a couple of connections in the kingdom but nothing like insane the first thing you do when you get to a new kingdom go to the monument there it is happy birthday oh the she... Yo, again. there it is a massive boost to the mm -hmm. account so that's 2000 gems there yeah another 2000 gems there another 200 there another hundred there so remember he was at ten thousand five hundred of course i'm gonna have the altars again hopefully this zone two in this map is fantastic for altars but hopefully they're gonna have a lot for me to collect so i've already talked about farms so let's have a look how the farm on this account is shaping up also just to be clear he's gotten about four thousand five hundred gems so far which is about a twenty dollar bundle purchase so i mean look there, look there's a lot of advantages to doing this besides just the gems but like you really working for that advantage that's for sure i made this farm and it's been sitting waiting for me i didn't make this as a jumper because i didn't want to upset the jumper cap for this group that i joined because of course if i made a jumper farm it may have pushed out a real player so i just started it during the loha event so if you guys didn't know the developers have changed how jumpers can operate now compared to in the past new kingdoms do have a a limit to the amount of players that can use their beginners teleport into that kingdom and so what he's saying here is that in a perfect world he would have had his farm account be a jumper account for this sleeper that way the farm account is already like really strong and powerful that way it can farm much more effectively for the main once it does arrive there but he did not do that so he could respect his kingdom's cap for the actual jumpers coming in i've only got the one lead farm perhaps i'll pop a few others soon the power is low i tend to keep my i'd rather have multiple farms than uh low farms the five dollar fate changer is crazy bro that's so funny that's so cute i've got 436 um quests to collect which is fantastic i've had a whole load of low hars on this account so i've got 10 blue 37 green to run and those are things that he can do with his main account now that it's here so that's good let's have a look at resources I think it's about maybe 20 25 million resources wow uh, plus all that i've got here which will take yep. a while to collect so i won't do that i only make basic farms i tend to stop at city hall 11 because i'd rather have multiple farms than high level farms back to the main let's just summarize you might just be surprised at how basic some of the things i've said in this guide are but truly the amount you log in does matter and that's really the secret right like be active like it's 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 really like that simple you get out of it what you've been into it you know but i personally feel you can be smart with your time i've achieved four million here kingdom day 11 and i haven't barbarian chained 
I haven't gathered gems. I guess that's the good news, right? Because I think a lot of people don't really feel like they have the time to barbarian chain or to gem grind, basically, you know, gathering gems. So I guess it is good news for some players to know that like you can achieve a, a good power in a, in a kingdom that has only 11 days and you don't have to, you know, fry your brain doing all the early game barb grinding and stuff like that. Let's also have a look at the number of barbarian kills just to show that this is not a trick of the light or that I have really been barbarian chaining. Number of barbarians killed only 1900. I would have thought after 20 days a pro chainer would be 10,000 at least even a semi chainer would be 5,000 so it's all been done with AP I'm glad he showed that because I do know that a lot of players do get skeptical about things like this thinking that it's not possible thinking that there must be some other explanation as to how he's gotten so much power so quickly so I'm glad that we have the evidence here I've only killed 200 forts on this account so I've not been doing a massive amount of forts either I hope this inspires some people to restart their account or have a go at the sleeper method. I hope you do better with um, altars and gold chests than me. And as I say, if you combine this with a grinding tips, which of course, like the 12 inch PVP penis would, would give you, you could have obviously, I think maybe even 5 million free to play by this point. I am 15th. Not bad, dude. 15th place for power as a free to play player without doing a bunch of barb grinding. That's pretty good. Yeah. City Hall. I'm 14th. I've of course gone Sun Tzu. I've gone Belarus because he's going to be my main march. I wouldn't usually put him in my sunset team. Good old City Keeper. Logic Bank has actually made a video talking about why City Keeper is super powerful in the early game Sunset Canyon. If you guys aren't familiar as to why that's the case, then definitely check out his video on that as well. Uh, from Barbarian to support and he would come into my team. And then of course for Archers nothing beats this guy early on so that's the base front line of my team perhaps i'll make another sunset video once i'm up and running so that's all for today hope this helps somebody or oh, let's just do the scores on the doors for the gold heads so for gold heads i am 17. okay which i don't think it's too bad remember i grabbed a couple at the end there from the olympia true which is a day 20 event which i think is well worth doing as well i hope this guide helps somebody Thanks for watching. So that's how it's done. I mean, he is top 20 power in his new kingdom as a free to play player. He's got 15,000 gems. He's got 17 gold heads saved up and he's got a ton of progress on his account that most other players in that kingdom are not going to have. And the only real thing that he did was make sure that he did all the events that he could and always have your building queues running, your research queue running, your training troops running and having a bunch of farms to supplement the amount of resources that you're inevitably going to need for those wall levels and things like that. So then the question becomes, if you're watching this video, should you restart in Rise of Kingdoms, right? And I think that it really depends. First of all, if you would find it fun to kind of start the best possible way in Rise of Kingdoms, then do it. I mean, the, this is a video game and the number one thing that you should have in a video game is fun, right? So if you want to start a jumper project, start a sleeper project, find players to join and play with, then you should do it. Should you, you know, throw away your current account to do something like this? I think the answer depends on how much progress you have. If you've been playing the game for, you know, many months and you've already gotten some investments in commanders and you're already like city hall 25 and all this other stuff, like, would you really benefit that much from starting over? Probably not, right? Probably not. Um, you do get an advantage, but it's not like a massive advantage. And I guess it really comes down to like, is, you know, how much have you spent on your account, if anything? And do you mind starting over? Also, are you likely to win KVK one based on your kingdom's performance? Yes or no. I think winning KVK one can put you in a really good position moving forward. I would say, you know, if you've been playing the game for months, I don't really think you need to start over to do this. But if you've just started playing Rise of Kingdoms in the last like two weeks or so, and you weren't really sure if you're going to be serious about the game and now that you've watched this or maybe now that you're watching just YouTube videos on rock in general now that you you know more about the game and you think oh wow like I could really be a lot more strong if I had just done this strategy well go ahead and follow in the logic banks footsteps and of course make sure you subscribe to his channel again I'm going to link to this video and his channel down in the description below go ahead and show him some love over there I really do appreciate him sending me this guide and letting me know that he wants this to reach more of you guys if you are new players while you're down there consider also liking this video and subscribing to my channel clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms videos liking videos and subscribing really pushes the videos out into the YouTube algorithm so it helps out the channel a ton and while you're down there consider 
consider commenting have you ever tried the sleeper strategy or a jumper strategy or something like that and how impressive do you think his progress is i personally think that it is very good for being in an 11 day old kingdom and i think he's definitely set up for success guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace